Okay, I want to discuss a little bit um, Emily Davison, who was a suffragette who became infamous for jumping in front of the King's horse at the Epsom Derby in 1913. The King at the time was George V. Um, this is something that has perhaps more than any, any other individual incident become symbolic of the suffrage movement in the United Kingdom. And images of it were transmitted around the world. Um, it's featured very prominently in the film Suffragettes. Uh, if you haven't seen that film yet and you don't want to hear about the specifics, then stop listening now because I am going to discuss it. In the film, it shows uh, the main character, Karen Mulligan's character, is sort of separated from this this woman, um, Emily. Um, and it was only towards the end of the film I clicked, okay, that's Emily Davison, because I knew a bit about the history. and. Uh, I realised then when we went to Epsom, I realised what character she was going to portray. So I knew what was going to happen. But it was a very powerful piece of cinema um, in the way that it was portrayed. But anyway, um, their adaptation of it basically then ends into the modern argument has, that has emerged from this. Um, traditionally, from the racing community and from others looking in on it, it's long been thought that this was a suicide bid in order to martyrize herself in order to win, bring attention to women's suffrage. But I've just watched a very interesting video with Claire Balding, um, and it shows a video from a much more clear angle. Um, there's quite a lot of footage of this around. That's interesting, and we're very lucky to have that archive material available of such an important historical incident, because it does give us first-hand evidence that otherwise wouldn't be there. Um, of course, film work was in its infancy this time, but this was um, this was filmed. And it basically shows, um, unless I'm mistaken, it may be one of the first deaths ever caught on film. Um, but anyway, it basically shows Emily Davison going in front of the horse then colliding and it's all pretty fast if you watch the original video it's hard to make out the details but this enhanced version which i'm going to put a link to in the information section here do check out it's only four minutes really shows another angle and it seems more likely that emily davison wasn't necessarily trying to kill herself but trying to attach a flash to the king Force abner it was called um was it a reckless thing to do almost certainly yes uh, there's no question about that. It was pretty reckless. Um, not only was she endangering herself, she was endangering the jockey and the horse. Um, and it was pretty naive if she thought that, you know, not to realise that a horse going at that speed wouldn't have caused her serious damage. I don't know if she thought she would sort of get out of the way or something. It was a reckless thing to do. On the other hand, had she not done it, would, you know, the day afterwards, that was on that was world headlines whereas up until that point some of the suffragette movements even even the bombing of ministers houses had been censored and they were frustrated that nothing was working to bring attention to the cause um so you could look at it as a selfish move in so far as endangering the horse and jockey on the other hand she was putting herself at danger for the wider movement uh, the jockey survived incidentally and there is an interesting backstory to him his name was Herbert Jones, and apparently he attended her funeral. Um, I, I don't know whether it was that experience or whether he was sympathetic in general, but he said he could never get that woman's, that poor woman's face out of his mind. Um, it haunted him for the rest of his life. Apparently, I, I would imagine that would be something like train drivers seeing a suicide in front of the train. But he said that, uh, you know, I can only imagine what that man would have seen. And what she would have seen, it must have been a really, really dramatic moment. Um, there's some indication the horse looked like it was going to jump. So whether he was indicating it to jump away from her or even over her, who knows? We can never be absolutely sure of what was going through her mind at the time. Uh, but anyway, he attended the funeral and um, he expressed sympathetic remarks about Emmeline Pankhurst. Sadly, he, he took his own life in 1951. But that's a bit of uh, the backdrop to it. Uh, it's one of those things like he was a secondary character, um, a bit like the um, the white guy in the famous Black Parcelwood. Um 
sometimes it's interesting to see the role that the secondary characters played. But anyway, um, you know, some have called Emily Davison a reckless anarchist. Others have called her a martyr. Uh, I think it's a bit of both, in all honesty. Not that I think she was an anarchist. I do think she was reckless. But at the same time, I do believe that she was very brave. And um, certainly the way the film shows it is very graphic. Um, I don't mean bloody, but it's very, you know, it's right there. Um, very powerful piece of cinema. Um, what happened at the time was someone, um, apparently she actually had a women's suffrage banner with her. Someone took that away. Now, whether that was to try and hide, uh, in the film it depicts that uh, the police inspector takes it away or one of his officers takes it away, almost as if to mitigate um, mitigate the political cause. But I think Emily Davison knew the cameras were on the king's horse. She knew that that would bring attention more than anything else. And she took that profound decision. Um, the, I, I haven't seen any information about what her friends or other suffragettes knew what she was going to do so i haven't seen any information like they knew she was going to do that so whether this was a solitary decision or it was planned it's hard to know we'll never i don't think we'll ever really know because all the principal people involved are long dead but it's certainly a very interesting piece of history um very sad piece of history in some ways but had it not happened maybe it would have you know maybe there would have been other direct action techniques that suffragettes used uh, maybe more extreme, um, you know, possibly even political assassinations and so on, and that probably would have turned against them. Um, it's certainly uh, an interesting thing to debate, but I think now in retrospect, she wasn't trying to kill herself. Um, she probably knew there was risks. She probably thought, well, I don't want to die, but if I do, it's worth it. I think that's what was going through her mind. Um, but it's pure speculation. Anyway, very interesting piece of footage. Feel free to check the video under this. Let me know your thoughts.